Here is a program that I've been working on recently. It involves robot arms and how to move them around intelligently. So this is a simulator for a robot arm that I wrote and you can create a fake arm by just clicking around on the screen and the most important thing that you want to do with a robot arm is you want to position the end effector and so what I'm doing is I'm taking this chain as I drew it and as I move it around I'm going to try to maintain the same default angle as best as I can so that looks something like this you can see as I move it it tries to keep joints that are more straight uh, as straight as I can whereas this one was bent to begin with and so it's it's bending a little bit more uh, you'll notice that as the arm overlaps these circles they turn red and that is telling me oh there's a collision that has been detected and that really gets to the heart of what I was trying to do with this program was to intelligently be able to manipulate a arm to avoid obstacles. I wasn't really happy with the solutions that I was seeing and I thought well I can do better than that. So uh, what I came up with was I have drawn a spline here from the root to the end effector that I am using to be able to manipulate the arm using that spline. So here I've got a long snaky arm that is difficult to manipulate uh, by going joint by joint, but if I use a spline to do it, then the arm is pretty manageable now. And right now I'm just moving this around manually but the goal is then later as I go and I move this around on my own, it will be intelligently moving these spline points around to keep the arm away from the obstacles. And once I have that working, I'm going to do joint limits. Right now, the joints don't really have a, a limit. They could go the full 180 degrees or 360 degrees. Uh, but I will implement that and then I intend to bring it into 3D and this should be a much better solution because uh, for this reason it, uh, it is very lightweight as far as the amount of calculation that has to be done the other solutions that I've been seeing were very processor intensive and they took a long time to reach a solution but uh, this one takes very little. So that is my inverse kinematics program that I've been working on. Thank you for watching.